Now it's time to crack open the J row pack and sort out the first bag. So I'm going to take my pack and crack it open. And I've got my booklet and a bunch of bags and a bunch of squares. So first thing I notice is my cornerstones and lattices. I'm going to count out 14 vertical sashings, 13 horizontal sashings for a total of 27, and then I need 14 cornerstones out of this pack. Usually there's a couple extra. I like to use the exact number and put them in my sashings pack. So I will put them in here. Um, I'll make them up with my pieces and I'll put them in here. And I have a sashings and cornerstones video if you wanna know how to do that. So I'll set these aside and then I have these big giant four and a half inch squares. One, two, three. And I have blocks J1 through J6, which will be covered in this video. And then blocks J7 through 13, which will be covered in a separate video. First thing I do, I'm going to open up my booklet and I'm going to see which ones are modified. So I have J5 is my first one and I'm going to open up my Dear Jane book and I need to go to the J row. So I've got J1 on this on this row. So all right, the first one that's edited is J5. So I'm going to go to J5 and this one's EPP modified. That way I know that once I get to this block that this is not the, the one I need to look at, this is the one I need to look at. And in this situation, it looks pretty much the same. The difference is right here. And so the paper pieces are going to be a different size. So you want to make sure that this is the one that you look at when you go to sort that block. So the next one I have that's modified is J9. I'm going to go to J9 and mark that one. EPP modified and J11, which is on the cross page, EPP modified. And I'm using a ballpoint pen in my book because Sharpie has a tendency to seep through, not necessarily with this paper, but with this paper it would. And then J12 is also modified right here. So J12 is my, not very neat, but you get the point. And then, okay, so then the next thing I do is I'm going to take my four and a half inch blocks and I'm going to look at my notes and it says the four and a half inch squares are used for J1, J10, and J11. And I'm going to take my Sharpie and mark that. All right, so I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to label my pieces J1. J10 and J11. Now, because I'm doing J1 through 6 on this video, I'm going to put J10 and 11 back in my main bag so that when I do J7 through 13, I have everything together. All right, so my booklet, the first block that I need to worry about in my booklet is J5. So I'm going to set my booklet aside because I don't need to worry about that until the fifth block, which is why I mark it in my book, because you get moving along on the paper pieces, and then you can't figure out why they don't fit right if you don't put a notification on your book. We're going to dump out my bag. I'm going to leave this out here because it's the first block. I'm going to dump out my bag, and I'm hoping that this isn't going to be too bad of a sort, because a lot of these pieces are large and as I say that there's a teeny tiny rectangle right there so yeah maybe not they all all right so J1 is my first piece and as I do these I put them in little piles of similar size so this is obviously for J1 I'm gonna sit this up here and then I'm looking for the square and these four diamonds and that's it for this first block so I'm gonna put squares 
and weird shapes and things like that. Like I'll put weird shapes together. And if I've got these that are similar and these are weird and these are tiny squares, squares I put together, rectangles. And so I'm going to sift through here and look for my diamonds and my square. All right. I did find the square that fits this and then I found the diamonds now, but let me tell you about the diamonds. I'm going to set this. Okay. I'm going to mark this first one thing at a time. I'm going to mark this J one and it's a focus fabric. My focus fabric indicator is my little Sharpie. So that's a dot. Now I found these diamonds. I'm going to put this up here because I'm going to turn my pages in a minute. Okay. I found these diamonds. There's only four of them. And there's no other diamonds in this bag. Because I went through and went, okay, what's similar to this? And J2, J3, J4, J5, and J6 do not have any of those giant diamonds in it. Or diamonds of any kind. So these have to be the diamonds for this block. But they're quite large. So, but yes, that's correct. It's not going to, they're all the same size, so it's going to look fine at the end, but they're much bigger than the diamonds in the book. And that's just because of the math that was used to cut them. So this is going to be, this is going to be your pieces for your J1 block. So I am going to mark these all with J1, and then I'm going to indicate focus fabric because that's exactly what they are it's focus fabric one two three four and I don't need to mark that with focus fabric because that's my background and I need to I do know what fabric I'm using for this block so I need to check it for directional and my J1 does have a direction in it let me show you what I'm looking at. The snowflakes don't have a direction, but there's these little bitty things in here, right here, whoops, that are going to look any, look different no matter which way they go. So this is going to have a direction to it, so it's going to matter when I put it on my block. So what I'm going to do in this case is I like to have directional fabric, especially when it's got any kind of a linear element to it. I like to have directional fabric radiating out from the middle. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to mark on my book exactly what I marked on my pieces so I know when I get to that block. And this one, I'm going to actually put it on the 45. I'm going to mark that as well so that I have that just because that's what I prefer. You can do what you prefer. So I'm going to bag this up with my fabric for my J1 block and I'm going to move on to my J2. All right, so on to the J2 block. And in this bag sort are these teeny tiny skinny skinny pieces. <laughs> and I think these are the skinniest pieces I've come across so far. I may be wrong, but I think that these are the skinniest pieces. So I've got all these little skinny pieces I've got a place. And then there's big triangles and big squares. So I'm going to search through. And when I check my triangles, I always want to make sure that I check it and make sure it's exact. So this is one. And I got to find three more like that. And then I'll go through the, the blocks and look for those as well. Those are too big. So that's another, that's a square. So I'll go from there. All right, a word about these squares. I have four squares that are exactly the same size to each other. And I've got my triangles have been sorting out. But when I, when I, sorry. When I went to look at these to make sure they were the right size, I lined them up on here and this side is fine, this side is fine, but if you look here, for some reason, 
this side in the book is slightly smaller than this. So this is not an exact square in the book, but it is on the paper piece. So if you measure this one section here and you get it a little off, then you do have the right side. And there's no squares in this pack that are the same, close to the same size. So you don't have to worry about that for this one. I don't that you have to worry about that with triangles, especially for a lot of the other bags. But in this case, one of the sides is, is correct to this book. It's just the book is off a little bit. So I'm going to continue to line these up as I go. I just wanted to make that note. All right, so I found all my pieces. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to label them with my fine point sharpie as J2. All right, so now that I've got all my pieces labeled as J2, I'm going to label them for my focus fabric. And as you see by the picture, the only ones that are not focus fabric are the teeny tiny skinny ones. So I'm going to put dots on all the rest of them. So all four of the big triangles. And I keep bumping my tripod. Sorry about that. And all four of the squares. And then the last thing I do before I bag up my pieces is I will check to see if I have a directional fabric. And I know what fabric I'm using for this one. And this is my fabric and it's not directional. So I'm not going to worry about arrows. But if you have arrows, excuse me, if you have a directional fabric for your J2 block, you may want to indicate which way you want it to go. So I'm going to bag this up and work on my next block. So the J3 block has some primary components in it that are make it very obvious. So we have this guy in the middle here. So this is obviously this piece. And then we have these four pieces with the circular ends that go, or excuse me, the curved ends that go in the inside curves there. And then we have these smaller points, and there's two sets of those type of points in this bag. There's a larger couple, and then there's four smaller ones. So obviously you want the four smaller ones. There's this one, which is the correct one. And then there's this one, which is for another block. So you got four of these little small guys. Three, four, and then you got triangles for this section. And I believe that these are the right triangles. Yep. So i got to find eight triangles of that size. And so I like to make sure that my triangles are all the same size. So I'll find eight triangles and I'll place these in the corners. So I've got all my pieces for my J3 block. And so I'm going to label them all with J3. And then I'll be able to indicate my focus fabric pieces. So I got my pieces labeled and then I'm going to work on, I've got to label my um, focus fabric pieces. So based on the picture here, it's going to be the triangles, these little triangles on the, on the outside corners, and then this big center piece and that's it. So all of these pieces and all these pointy pieces are background. And then I also need to check to see if I need to label it because on this one I happen to know my fabric. This is the last one of this bag that I know what my fabric is. And this obviously is extremely directional because it's a striped fabric. So I have to indicate which way I want my stripe to go. And I'm not really sure how I want to play this yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put arrows to the top. And that way when I go for my block prep, I don't have to reset up my block to figure out which pieces go where. I can just work on the direction of the fabric. So if I want my fabric to go like on the 45, then I can move my arrow to be on the 45 and so on. So as long as I've got them indicating all in the same direction, I will even put an arrow direction here. 
so I know what way I indicated. So I'm going to just do the ones that have red dots on them. And then it goes. These move around a lot on this paper. <clears throat> and then this one. So then I'm going to bag this up and I will be able to move on to my next block. My J4 block has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces total. And they're very obvious from what I have left. I have these two pieces, this giant sucker, and then four triangles. So those are my four pieces. Let me lay those out and then I'll be able to label them up. So these are my seven pieces for J4, and I'm just going to quickly label those. And then I have these three pieces that are focus fabric, and since I don't know what my focus fabric is for this one yet, I'm going to label them with arrows from here on in, because I don't know the other three blocks, because they're in a different location than where I am right now. And then I have... This is a focus fabric, and these are focus fabric. And then this is up and up. If it's a stripe, I'm just going to do this way and then this way, but I don't know what I have yet. So, and then arrow direction. I don't need to put this here if I write it on this, but I'm just going to put it here because it's easier for me. I'm going to bag this and move on to the next one. So when I go to J5, I see my note for my EPP modified, which means I need to work from my booklet. So here's my booklet page, and it has four of these weird looking pieces, and then these oblong triangles with rounded edges, a square, and then these pieces. So I've got since there's hardly anything left, I've got all four of those spikes. There's five squares left that are exactly the same size, so grab one. Stick it in the middle. And then I've got four of these puppies that go on the outside. And then these four, I don't even know what you want to call them, trough looking things. So let me get this laid out. So I'm going to again label my J5 pieces. So I've got these all labeled for my J5 pieces. And then I'm going to look at this for my focus fabric. So all these round bottom triangles and the center square are the focus fabric pieces. So one, two, three four, and five, and then I'm also going to mark it for direction because I don't know what my directional fabric is going to do. Now on this one I'm going to mark my arrow up and down and then I'm going to mark a radiating pattern because if I do have a directional fabric that's how I'm going to want it to be. So I'll put my arrows on my pieces and then I'll bag them up. So J6 is the last block of this bag and since it's not a modified block I can put my booklet away and I will put that away with my um, two four and a half inch squares and my J7 through J13 bag. So I can do that the next time I'm doing a bag sort. So all these other pieces that I have are for J6. So I've got nine of these tiny squares somewhere that I'm going to throw on the floor if I'm not careful. I've got nine of these tiny squares, four big squares for the outsides, and then three times four is twelve. So 12 of these rectangle dealies, which essentially the tiny squares are the same size as the cornerstones, and these are just short sashings, so they're because they're half inch. So let me get these all laid out, and I'm going to use my stiletto because it's way easier when dealing with these small pieces, and I'll be able to make sure that I have all of my pieces here. So I got all my pieces accounted for. So of course I got to label them all with the J6. Now to label the focus fabric. So I've got the outside large squares 
our focus fabric. And then the ones touching the large squares are background, so the one in the middle on each side is going to be focus fabric. And then the squares in the five on the diagonal, so the squares that form the X are going to be focus fabric, so they don't touch each other. So it's this whole alternating pattern. So you got the five squares in the X that are focus fabric, and then the four segments, and then the four squares. I will label these for directional in case I have a directional fabric and bag them up. And that will be the end of the J1 through J6 bag sort.